Right. Welcome to welcome back to the Modern Mompreneur Podcast. I am your host, Dave Smith. And today I'm super excited to be joined by one of my favorite organizing bunnies, Amelia Pleasant Kennedy. Amelia and I met um, a few years ago in the National Association of Black Professional Organizers, a national, the premier national organizers for BIPOC organizers. And we hit it off right away. I loved her energy. I loved her. Uh, she was a little bit different as a life coach and really being intentional about how she coaches people to a more productive and organized life. So I invited her to join me in my personal event at the Wow Factor. And she spoke in January and did an amazing job. And so I've been following Amelia. She's a fellow podcaster. She's a mompreneur, obviously. And so we speak the same language on so many levels. So welcome, Amelia, to the Modern Mompreneur Podcast. Thank you so much for having me. It's so great to connect with you again and talk yes. mom life and business, of course. Yes, yes. So I, you know, I have to say I, I love your light. Like your 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 video looks amazing with the light. I'm in a closet for the sound quality and it's all dim. <laughs> but that's okay. We're gonna let you shine because you're beautiful inside and now we're gonna let you have it with that. So um, so yes, Amelia, so tell us who you are and who do you serve? Yeah, absolutely. So I am a certified life coach, a professional organizer, of course, and a certified fair play facilitator. Mm. And my business is a pleasant solution. And I started off as an in-home organizer, but started to realize the layers of mental and emotional clutter that Mm. many of us carry underneath the surface. And the judgment that we place on ourselves around um, what it means to be a good mother or partner or to care for our homes and the pressure to that work-life kind of integration that we're always striving for. So I coach folks to get to kind of those deeper root causes of our beliefs around home life and then start the healing process. So that we can thrive in our spaces, understand our habits, learn new skills, and just kind of up level in terms of mindset as well as practical organization. I love it. I love it. So life coach, organizer, and fair play facilitator. We got to talk about what the heck is that? Um, <laughs> and, and, and so outside the business, you are a mom of three. Yes. You are a mom of a star athlete. We were just catching up on your son's uh, achievement and the sacrifices that you've made to ensure that he has a bright future. And you're also, um, you know, a caregiver in a sense, mm-hmm. correct? So um, how do you balance co- focusing on your career, on your on your business and making sure that your family is still a priority as an organizer or a coach? That is the key word priority. And I feel like so many of us, we think that we can hold sort of multiple priorities at once. And I think it's really important to have sort of one or two around family, one or two around business, you know, one or two that are personal, but no more than that. And really giving yourself grace and permission to understand that life you're not always going to be able to give your time and attention to those top priorities all day, every day. So Mm -hmm. for me, yes, I have three children, had them all close together, busy household when they were younger. And it's sort of girl, boy, girl, my girls are brilliant. They each have their own talents. And my son is on an elite soccer journey. So for him, we're on the move from city to city and sort of encouraging his passions. Mm -hmm. I am a caregiver for my mother who's living with dementia. And over the last few years, that has changed because for the first couple of years, I was on the ground with her very close. And now I've kind of shifted back to being a long distance caregiver, Mm -hmm. which has its challenges as well. So Just kind of always taking a deep breath and saying, what can I focus on effectively right now? How can I do it well? 
and what is my top priority? And when we shift into a different priority, for example, being a long distance caregiver now, it doesn't mean that I don't love my mom, I, mm-hmm. I, that she's not important, that she's not the focus of my time. It just means that I can't do it to the best of my ability quite the way that I did maybe a few years ago. So I know she's safe. I know she's cared for. Mm-hmm. I can support her in other ways. But when we shift our priorities, it, it doesn't mean we don't love and have the passion for that thing. It just means that we can't give 100% of our time and attention at that moment to that priority. So I'm constantly yeah. sort of changing the, that, yeah. that focus. I, I, lo- I love that you said that because that's the reality of being a mompreneur because you do have two or more really important things in your life, which is your mo- motherhood journey and your marriage, if you're married, mm-hmm. so family, and then this business that you do have to pour so much of your energy and resources into and so you do have to be okay with really understanding and dispelling any beliefs, unhealthy beliefs about prioritization and balance, you know. So what have been some, I guess, aha moments or challenges that you've had in your journey where you had to, like specifically examples where you had to like shift and it ended up working out or it ended up being a lesson for you? Yeah, I mean, we're just coming through the summer season, and mm-hmm. I feel like for many moms, um, that's the time where, you know, kids are home from school and attention on business or projects may have to shift. Mm-hmm. So, for example, I, I, for several years, several summers, got caught up in thinking, like, I should be working more. I should mm-hmm. be focusing on my clients and business. And it helped to consciously kind of decide that during the summer season, when kids are home, family, things are changing, or um, traveling, or or doing other things, that that it's okay if I take a step back from mm-hmm. business. Yeah, And it's really that conscious choice saying, because that the struggle comes from the push pull of like, I should be momming. I should be (laughs) business, like (laughs) all in on my business. I should be all in on caregiving. And um, yeah, I think for the summer season, just acknowledging that I love my business. I love my clients. I want to be there. And it's not realistic given Mm -hmm the dynamics of the day with everyone home. So yeah. just giving myself permission to take a step back and uh, shift the priority, shift the focus. Yeah, same, same. I, I often hear people say there as an entrepreneur, there's no bad July or you don't have as much, many clients or as much a business. And as a mompreneur, I don't mind that because that's a time for me to be a little more present with the family because they are, they they can be out of school and we can spend time. Uh, but also, like you said, a time to just reflect, slow down. Last year, I took a sabbatical in the whole month of July where I was off, I was traveling, um, you know. And so I hope that more mompreneurs, you know, take a page from, from what you just said around using the time and the cycles and seasons of life to really take a step back and say, okay, I can take a break, give myself grace. I don't have to be hustling and bustling during this season uh, because that's what my life requires. You know, we have to do things differently as mompreneurs uh, because we have those very important priorities in our life that they're going to need us, you know? So, yeah. And that allows you to do it guilt-free. So I also consciously took a month of rest during July and you can look around and you can see like, at least in the Northern hemisphere, like summertime, most folks are on vacation. They are with family and and you can just acknowledge like, oh, people don't expect me to get back to them maybe as quick of a turnaround Mm -hmm. time as Mm -hmm. they do during different times of the business cycle year. Yeah, we all just kind of say, you know what, summer, we'll just relax a little bit and breathe, reset, whatever that looks like. And it's healthy. You shouldn't you shouldn't require yourself to go, go, go. I often joke like even even God rested. You know, like if he so we all need a little break to just take 
take some time to reflect. So, yeah. So, um, I want to transition to talk about your business and how you serve mm-hmm. clients. Um, what are some the way you serve clients is very unique, you know, because you're not just a organizer. You dig a little bit deeper and really peel back the layers to understand the root cause of your challenges around not having an organized life. Um, tell us more about that and sprinkle in some of this this insight around fair play facilitator. I'm just so intrigued about what that is. <laughs> yes. Um, so again, we are all sort of raised in a loving way in our communities, our families, and we receive messages about growing up, um, what it means to be a good mother, a good partner, a good wife. And we don't realize how much we internalize those beliefs. And we sort of do things in the way that we've seen other family members or community members do them. And we just stop to fail to we fail to stop and question whether that truly serves our particular mm. life and home. And so the external clutter that we see in our lives, whether that's overworking or physical clutter in the home or stress in a relationship, that all starts within. And so I really help clients kind of get curious about what they've been taught growing Mm -hmm. up about about life and home, the decisions that they're making now, and whether that truly aligns with the lifestyle that they want to be living. Mm -hmm. So many of us want more calm, we want more space, and we want more joy. But it, it, it often requires a pause and like a questioning of, hey, I'm is what I'm doing every day, does that really make sense for me and my life? And so in terms of fair play, that's a a concept developed by Eve Rodsky, and she wrote two New York Times bestselling books about it. It's actually both a language and a system for how to discuss chores and responsibilities within the home. Because Mm -hmm. research shows that in um, in heterosexual partnerships, the women tend to do more of the domestic labor. Mm, Mom, yeah, we <laughs> we're always thinking we've got that to-do list running constantly. We're <laughs> noticing that we're low on catch-up. We're noticing that the kids need new shoes. Oh, and oh. not only are we carrying that mental load, but we're then executing and and following through as well. So fair play, what it is, is a way of talking with your partner, or if you're living in a multi-generational household, talking with the people in your home to say, like, how can we balance the tasks and the, the responsibilities in our home more evenly so that I get more mental space and free time and they get to understand all that really truly goes in to running a household. Yes. I love that. See, I didn't know that's what you meant by fair play, but wow, that is huge because we, we, the moms do take on a lot more and, you know, I have a husband who does things that I never do around the house. So I can't say that it's all me, but there is definitely a, a a a heavier load, and just to be able to have the the tools to have that conversation to ask for help, you know, because a lot of times we think, well, you should know that I need to do this. You should know because school is starting and the shoes are little. You should know, but it's like that should takes away the opportunity for you to communicate with them that their needs, because the, just like you've been raised in a house where the moms are doing everything. They may have been raised in a house where the moms were doing everything too. So they don't know that there's anything different, you know? And so I really like that you had that conversation, especially in this modern world where women are working just as hard as men in their careers and their businesses. It's not like how it used to be. I mean, a lot of cases, women are, you know, the only one working and the fathers are the ones at home. And so talking about that dynamic is so important. Um, 
I have read this quote where it says sometimes women are expected to work as if they don't have kids and raise kids as if they don't work. And so your fair play facilitation and bringing that into the house is, I'm sure, really creating some generational like breakthroughs, really, you know, for these for these homeowners. So I yeah, love that. I- I love that quote by Amy Westerbell. And there you it go. really so you is, know who, who said it. <laughs> yeah, you. yeah, because it's true, right? And and it's not about who you are as a woman or who you are as a man, but all these messages that we've received growing up and we just kind of fallen into these habits or patterns or boxes. Mm-hmm. And it kind of disadvantages the men in our life in particular because they hesitate to get involved with the kids or mm-hmm. hesitate to to help organize the home because we are often the dominant voice and have our ways that we like doing it. So mm-hmm. that's where that irritation, friction, resentment can show up in relationships. Yeah. And the solution really happens sort of one conversation at a time, yeah. getting to understand, hey, this is why we do these things in our household. Are you on board with learning how to do it? Because the men have the skills. We, we can teach they them. They, they're, they're perfectly capable, successful in their own careers and, and lifestyles. So it's not that we have to do it all. It's just this, that, that this is the dynamic that's kind of been set up and we can disrupt that. We can, and we should. We should. We are showing our husbands how to be contributing partners, and then showing our kids that that doesn't have to be that way, mm-hmm. um, which which brings me to my next question. Since you do have older kids, or even if you have younger kids, how does fair play um, involve them with sharing the load? Yeah, I love that question because uh, many people read the book, and it's actually a card game system as well. There's like playing cards, and they think that it has to happen only sort of one way. But um, Eve created a set of 100 most commonly done tasks around the house from laundry to dishes to caring for kids, like screen time to packing for trips. And they're all these kind of little cards that one, you can have a discussion with your partner, with your children around, like, why do we do these things? And then you can actually pass them out. So that. I'm responsible for, um, you know, seeing what we need in the pantry this week. And that's my job. But it's not just a chore. It's a it's a way of understanding what our household expects when it comes to what we eat, um, Mm -hmm. how we keep the pantry, how we make the grocery list and acknowledging the invisible work that is often done by the mother. Mm-hmm. It brings it out into the light and makes it visible for your kids yeah. or your partner by saying, like, here's a physical card, like you're responsible for watering the plants or feeding the pet this week, because yeah. together, those all contribute to the household environment that we want. Absolutely. And that's brilliant, because I know for me, and I'm being very transparent, I do take on a lot of the um, the food prep, right? Mm-hmm. And because I've like taken that as my thing, I'm often defensive when my kids complain about snacks or my husband's like, why did you cook this this way? Or questions how much I've spent on it. But I think that's because it's so like my thing that I'm like, well, did you contribute to this? Or did you, you know, and so I feel like fair play would even help to break down some of my own um, feelings and and deep subconscious feelings about the responsibilities that I have, you know, because it's not mine. It's a household shared experience. So I really like that because I I know I sound crazy, but it's like, what I bought, I bought that. And you, you know, this is what we're going to eat. And I had a reason for buying it. It was on sale. You know, my family probably looking at me like, I just asked why the orange, the apples are green, you know? (laughs) Yeah, because the default. (laughs) Yeah, because the default almost feels like, and I say this from a from the perspective of having been married twenty years, the default feels like we're keeping score. 
right? I did X amount of mm-hmm. tasks this week. How many did you do? Yes, yes. Right? Real. You're like, um, first of all. <laughs> and we don't want to do that because that's not oh, helpful for a marriage and relationship. Healthy. And it's more about like, hey, day, why do you care so much about what we eat? the kind of snacks, like what's underneath of it all. And that may be your vision for health and wellness for your family. And then when we swap the cards, because part of the game is, is not having always one person do the same set of tasks over and over, but giving the kids some power, giving your, your husband or partner some power so that they know how to do those things mm-hmm. when you're away or when you when you need a break, or when you're um, out of commission from an illness, right? Just showing that it's not gender that that makes us good at doing laundry or cooking meals. That it's actually something everyone in the house can learn to do if we just give them space and time to try a little bit and fail and yeah. learn some more. Yeah, and I bet. I would imagine that one of the rules would be to let them do it their way. They're not going to water the plants in the order that you want or do the daughter's hair the way you would do it or cook a meal the same way, but they're doing it their way. And it could be a great experience and you're empowering them. So that's another thing I think would have to be a part of the game. So I love the fair play game. Yeah, as cool. a recovering perfectionist, you know, right. part of it for a mom mm-hmm. is also letting go a little bit of those standards and expectations. And part of the discussion is actually talking about like, what's the minimum baseline for you to do this task? Like, what's good enough so I can sleep well at night knowing that, you know, the floors have been vacuumed or whatever it might be. We, we've just got a baseline for what clean or done or organized really is. Yes. Speaking of organizing. So as a life coach and professional organizer, um, what, what are clients, how do they work with you and what is the work that you do with them? I know you work virtually in order to help them in, on that journey. Yeah. So I typically work with clients for a longer period of time, about six months, um, where we meet weekly. And Mm -hmm. I like to imagine it like you feel like life is is tangled up like a delicate necklace. There are knots sort of throughout the necklace. And you're like, all right, I want to sort this out to create a more aligned and sustainable lifestyle. So, So we often have conversations toward with the with the purpose of heading towards a client specific goal or 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 change that they want to make in their life but we um gently untangle sort of one knot and then we move to another and and we we bounce around until the whole thing opens up and and creates uh the calm result that they're looking for so I often do virtually organize during sessions so clients can bring photos or videos of a space they'd like designed or um, decluttered. And we work on the internal work or we talk about fair play. So there's a variety of topics that I can help with, but it's through conversation and uh, virtual organizing that we reach the result of uh, less clutter overall in scheduling home and uh, the mental space. I love that. Very holistic approach, Mm -hmm. as you know, which is part of the reason why we joined together in the wild factors, because when you go to help someone organize, it's never just about too many clothes in the closet or too many pounds of paper or overbuying in the pantry. There's always, always something more behind that. And so you help people in the long term tap into that so that they can really have that that transformation really because you're with them every week you know talking about the things that are not just the physical but the emotional and mental disorganization that they experience and I'm sure that they feel very supported because you're with them and you're not leaving them okay I've organized this pantry go do you know or you know it's clothes are decluttered keep it this way because they won't it, it 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 needs to be a habit. And so your work that you do is, is really interesting. So I love that. 
Thank you. Yeah. It's both about transferring skills. Mm -hmm. It's about normalizing their personal experience. Maybe they were never taught how to organize. Maybe they have a neurodiverse brain and look at things Mm -hmm. in a different kind of way. It's about meeting clients exactly where they are and helping them see that all of these areas are possible within their own own brain, own life, um, and that what they're experiencing, you know, it is totally, um, is totally normal and can be shifted in the direction that they want it to go. That it's not one size fits all, I guess is what I'm offering. Yeah. Love that. Love that. Well, thank you for sharing. So we can talk more about how people can learn more about how you can support them. Uh, at the end, but right now I want to transition into the lightning round. So this is my favorite part. The lightning round I ask you is where I will ask you a few questions and whatever comes to the top of your head, the top of your mind you say, um, just so we can get to know you a little bit more. Okay. All right. You got it. Don't be scared. You're good. You got it. All right. So first question, what are three words to describe you today? Creative, inspired, and grounded. Love it. What would you tell your 18-year-old self today? Keep going. What you believe in your heart is the truth. Wow. What does it mean to you to be a modern mompreneur? To be flexible with clear purpose. I believe that the most empowered question a woman or a mompreneur can ask herself is what do I want? Wow. Okay. What do you love about being a mom? I love all the moments when you witness your kids living their lives, but they don't recognize that you're watching them. So those secret moments where you catch them out of the corner of your eye doing something and that just warms your heart and makes you smile. Love it. So sweet. Um, What are you reading, watching, or listening to right now? So I am reading The Creative Act by Rick Rubin. It's just a a book on on creativity and how it comes forth. Um, I am watching Justified City Reimagined, I think. Um, I love uh, mysteries and it's set in the city of Detroit and it's a mix of like country and city and I'm a small town girl so I love that um and listening to I love to listen to podcasts so I love that you produce one and yeah yeah, I'm just a fan of of all kinds of podcasts love it love it great and last question what is bringing you joy right now Beginning a new adventure. So our family's philosophy is to always follow the adventure, even when it's hard or challenging. So my son recently was signed to a major league soccer team academy. And so our family has uh, begun our third round of long distance parenting and marriage. And uh, it just brings me joy to see the five of us collectively come together to support my son, who's had this passion and goal and dream ever since he was three years old. So it's about the journey, not the destination. Yes. And you guys are doing it well, making it look easy. I'm sure it's not, but I'm always rooted for your family and all the success for your kids and all that good stuff. So. Wonderful. Well, thank you for sharing the lightning round. I always learn a little bit more about guests, even if I know you when I do the lightning round. So stuff is just for me because I'm like, this is fire. I'm like, oh, that's a good book. Oh, I mean, you know, that's great that you think about motherhood that way. Everyone lights up. So, so tell me, tell us how people can connect with you. 
For sure. Yeah. I'd love for you to take a listen to my podcast, which is yeah. called A Pleasant Solution, Embracing an Organized Life, where I talk wh- about why mindset is an essential component to an aligned and sustainable lifestyle. You can connect with me on Instagram at a pleasant solution. I'm on LinkedIn at a, um, Amelia Pleasant Kennedy. Um, yeah. And yeah, my website is a pleasant solution. Easy all across the board, nice and simple. Yes. Um, and I host monthly workshops that are free and open to the public as well. Awesome. Awesome. And your workshops can be found from the website as well, pleasantsolution.com? Correct. Yeah. Any okay. of the, those ways. Yes. Yeah, so we will definitely put the links in the show notes for the podcast, the workshop, and how to connect with you on your website at LinkedIn and Instagram. So you be sure to go and follow Amelia, find out how you can stay connected with her, um, sign up for the workshops that are free, but sure, so you can really embrace the transformational life that comes with an organized life, mentally, physically, and emotionally. Um, and I want to just thank you, Amelia, for joining the Modern Mompreneur podcast. You are the epitome of a modern mompreneur and how you serve your clients in a unique way, how you're raising your family in a unique way and taking it all in stride. And like I said, making it look easy, but you truly are such a pleasant person to just talk to and be around like the name fits. Okay. It really does. And so I'm sure you make all of your clients and people you come in contact with feel the same way. So thank you for gracing us with your pleasant personality and share your experience on the podcast. Um, anything you'd like to say to close out? Yeah, thank you um, for having me, for being in my world. Uh, I'm really, truly grateful and gratitude is a core value of mine. And yeah, I just, I, I love everything that you do. And I love that you're speaking to this um, intersection of mom life and business life. And to all the listeners, keep going. It makes sense. You're doing the right thing. Trust in yourself. Um, it will work out. Awesome. Thank you for that last part. I'm sure a lot of moms need to hear that. And so thank you guys for listening to this episode of the Modern Mompreneur Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode with Amelia, feel free to share it with your fellow mompreneurs or anyone you feel that can be inspired for to have a more pleasant and decluttered life. And subscribe to the Modern Mompreneur Podcast as well as the Pleasant Solution, Amelia's podcast as well. And always remember, mompreneurs, to give yourself permission to live your full dreams so you can realize your full potential. Thank you guys for listening. Until next time.